The question is that the amendments be agreed to, and I call the honourable member for Riverina. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. This Nature Positive Environment Protection Australia Bill 2024 is the thin edge of the wedge. What really perturbs me and so many others, particularly farmers, is that their lives and livelihoods are being encroached upon more and more and more. They have so much difficulty doing what they do now without another layer of bureaucracy placed over their occupations, uh, their industries, uh, how they go about their business. And what really concerns many as well is what happens after the next election uh, if there is a minority Labor government uh, operating in conjunction with the crossbench, and particularly the Greens political party, because that would be disastrous for this nation. Because the Greens political party is not just an environment party. The Greens political party is much more than that. They dangerously want to change the way we live. They dangerously want to rewrite history. They dangerously want to perverse uh, the, the, the future such that uh, the way we have uh, modelled our society is altered for the worse in years to come. Simple truth, this bill is bad for business and it's particularly bad for rural and regional and remote communities. Why? because it's yet another example of more and worse restrictive regulation. This uh, regulation, red tape, green tape, green lawfare, call it what you will, uh, is being foisted onto small and local businesses. They, you know, they don't have uh, chief financial officers, they don't have compliance officers, they don't um, have human resource managers, but hang on, yes they do, because they're all of that. The mums and dads businesses are doing all of that and so much more. And if they do employ people, and that's becoming increasingly difficult because of uh, all manner of reasons, uh, they then, uh, they then uh, often pay that person or persons more than what they take home themselves. Uh, they never have a holiday. And particularly those businesses which operate uh, somehow, somewhere in uh, the space involving environmental laws. Um, it, it's just making it harder to employ people. And the barriers that they face are then forcing them to uh, not employ people, to do it all themselves and then work harder and harder and harder mm -hmm. almost into an early grave. Um, you, you take the phasing out of gillnet fishing on the Great Barrier Reef. Um, you know, provisions uh, under the Environmental and uh, Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act, the EPBC, it is just becoming increasingly difficult. Now I know some of what we, we face here is uh, state compliance, state law, but uh, come on, do we really need another Environmental Protection Authority overseeing everything? And, and, then, and then it becomes so difficult. Uh, when, when people come to your electorate office and complain about this, that and everything else under environmental law to know whether it's a, going to be state EPA or, or Commonwealth mm -hmm. jurisdiction uh, and you know, it all gets caught up. And I think sometimes that's what government wants. That's what, the, uh, uh, that's what the bureaucracy wants. They want these things to be tied up for years and years and years and it's no wonder nothing ever gets done. It's no wonder nothing ever gets delivered. It's no wonder it's so hard to build infrastructure because every time you do, you've got another layer of uh, cultural law and green lawfare and, and uh, minority groups that just want to stop everything. I mean, we, we had a policy that we wanted to build dams and, uh, and, and it was so difficult because the Commonwealth can't build dams without the say-so of the states. And it wasn't just the Labor states. It was sometimes it was those states that were under our own, um, our, our own political colours, stripes, that uh, uh, also made it so difficult 
to get on and build water infrastructure for, uh, for flood regulation to, uh, to stop uh, communities being flooded, but also to store water uh, for valuable food and fibre production. And it shouldn't be so. I mean, we're smarter than that. Well, should be, but uh, um, it is becoming so onerous on businesses, uh, on, on, on ministers, just to get something done. Um, and, and I do feel as though there is this insidious uh, creep of, uh, of, of more and more compliance. And uh, all too often, uh, ministers are being made to just comply with what uh, the bureaucrats tell them is necessary, tell them is so. And uh, look out if they don't, because they could potentially end up in the, uh, in the Federal uh, National Anti-Corruption Commission. Uh, if they don't follow what, indeed, the public servants, the bureaucracy, has told them that this must be so. Um, we need to protect the environment. There's, there's absolutely no question about that. Uh, we, we haven't got a planet B at the moment, and I, I, I get the fact that we, we need to protect the planet, but we also need to protect people in jobs. We need to protect people who want to build things. We need to protect people who want to just live a, a, a common-sense life. Um, and, and heaven help us. <coughs> heaven help us if the, if the Greens political party forms a power-sharing agreement with Labor after the next election. Um, we've, we've seen um, just this week uh, the move to ban live sheep exports. Uh, we, we know that uh, uh, this is not uh, an animal welfare thing. We know that this is not good for the environment. It's just bad for business, bad for Western Australia, bad uh, for the agriculture industry uh, full stop. And, you know, sad to say that the biggest budget expense for agriculture, for farming, in the federal budget handed down on the 14th of May was $107 million to stop farming far farmers farming. I mean, that, that, that's a fact. Um, so heaven, heaven forbid uh, what is going to happen if the Greens are in a power-sharing arrangement. They have a horse-racing transition task force. That's going to coordinate and shut down the horse racing industry. I mean, yeah, let's let's go do it. Let's go do that. No, it only employs 70,000 people. Only employs, employs um, engages with hundreds of millions of dollars back to state, mainly coffers, but also uh, in the form of federal taxes and and uh, you know one of our biggest industries. But uh, you know, if the Greens get their opportunity, they'll, they'll, they'll shut it down. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Um, you know, and and this is where all this over-regulation is headed. Um, uh, and I, I, just, I, I, mean, I was being facetious when I said, yeah, let's do that. I mean, it, it's just, it, it is just getting too much. And then, of course, we have the Labor Greens loving with their agreement to strip water for irrigation in the Murray-Darling Basin. Uh, we, we had the budget come down with an NFP next to the amount that the government will pay uh, to buy back water. And buying back water um, is code for those river communities which rely on irrigation uh, for their communities to, uh, to to almost cease existence. So they were, they were sent out there. Uh, many of those communities formed as part of a soldier settlement plan. Uh, certainly in the Maroole district, the Griffith district, uh, uh, in the southern and western Riverina areas. Uh, but uh, They've been told that uh, what they do is environmentally unsustainable, just like our farmers, best stewards for the environment in the nation, get told to stop farming, get paid, incentivised to do so. I mean, this is just this is just a nonsense. And the NFP I referred to in the budget papers is not for publication, so we don't know how much money the government is going to spend on stopping irrigation farmers from growing the food and fibre that is the best in the world, best in the world, and we need it. Here for domestic purposes, we need it for our exports. And yet, according to the government, according to certainly to the Greens, and the government should realise this and put the Greens political party last on their how to vote cards. This legislation is overreach. It is absolute overreach. You wonder where it will all stop. Uh, we don't know because Labor and the Greens are always plotting against their natural enemies. Uh, that's our farmers. That's our farmers. And uh, you know what we see in this place. I know the member for Parks has often said it. Uh, we, we just get tired, uh, and I know the member for Herbert would agree with me here too. We get tired of being lectured to by 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 MPs who come in here 
and their electorates are about as big as that. It's my handkerchief for those who can't see this. And uh, you know, they, they represent these uh, all holy, pure and pious people um, who, who don't understand that their food just doesn't come from the supermarket. It actually gets to the supermarket via trucks, and they're against them, against the drivers who drive them. It comes originally from a paddock, uh, but they don't understand it. They just think it comes from the, 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 the fridge at the supermarket. Uh, and they, they put everything in place, this legislation included, uh, to stop farmers doing what they do best, best in the world, best international practice, and that is growing the food and fibre that is second to none anywhere. And I don't ever hear, I don't ever hear those opposite, and certainly uh, those who sit uh, on the crossbench, ever say thank you to our farmers, thank you for doing what you do, thank you. Thank you, thank you, and that would be breakfast, lunch and dinner, because without a farmer that doesn't happen. They don't get the food on the table, and it's legislation such as this. Oh, yeah, let's just have more public service. How many did we get in the budget? Uh, tens of thousands more. And, and that's important, and, and, I, I, and, I, and I, I, I certainly take that interjection. Uh, from so the member for Jellybrand, the minister at the table opposite. I, I certainly, uh, veterans, veterans are important, and uh, and we and, and I know we're, we're, we're past, we're, we've introduced legislation today about veterans, and, and no one knows this more than the member for Herbert, a, a fine veteran himself. I mean, I would ne I'm a former Veterans Affairs minister, so I don't, I certainly don't need to be lectured to about uh, about how important our veterans are. We need we need to look after them, but we also need to look after. Uh, those people who feed veterans, and I, let, let me tell you just a little fact: uh, some of those veterans go on to become farmers they do. once their once their uniform service is over. Once once they are done uh, with serving our our air force, our army, and our navy, they actually go and take up uh, the land, just like they did up more than a hundred years ago in Griffith, in Leeton, in uh, Narandra, in in the Maroo Creek area, uh, and you know. And what are we doing? We're putting more legislation in to stop them doing what they're doing. But, uh, inter and, and, you know, and even in my own electorate, you know, we've got Riverina land and is up in arms as destructive solar farms uh, are taking valuable, vital, prime agricultural land and wanting to just uh, cover them with, uh, with solar panels. And they say it's good for the sheep. <laughs> I mean, go figure. Go, go figure. It's good for the sheep. Well, you know, it might be good for for their leasing arrangements so these Pitt Street farmers don't have to worry about the land uh, for the next 10, 20, 30 years. But ultimately, uh, those solar panels are going to have to be recycled, and at the moment we can't do that. They, they, just don't, the, 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 they end up in landfill, uh, and that's got to be bad for the environment. But, but then again, uh, we've got Green's political party MP uh, Maureen Fariki, uh, Senator Fariki. Uh, well, um, she, it, the environment's all well and good until it comes to her own Port Macquarie property, and uh, you know, uh, she's planning to bulldoze dozens of trees to subdivide a Port Macquarie investment property, investment what? property, into three luxury rentals. Yeah, what? 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 I hear the member for Herbert say. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, they're all well and good to come in here and lecture us about what's good for the environment, biodiversity, uh, shutting down our those terrible farmers who feed us three times a day, uh, closing down the Murray Darling Basin. But when there's a few trees. A few dozen trees. I shouldn't say a few. It's more than a few. It's uh, uh, dozens of trees. Uh, oh, that's okay. That's okay. Let's just get the bulldozers in. Uh, you know what's good for the goose has got to be good for the gander. But I tell you what, um, you know uh, how hypocritical. How how hypocritical. And uh, you know I'll come in here and, and, and she's she's one to talk. I mean she she tells us that uh, you know all those terrible miners that we have in this country. Well, they've caused the uh, you know, global warming in Pakistan. That, that, that's what she has said. That's what she is on the public record as saying. I mean, you, you can't make this stuff up. You know, I, I can hear your, uh, your, your incredulity, uh, Member for Herbert, because it is right. I mean, um, but you know, look, this nature positive environmental um, bill, uh, it's, it's just another overreach, it's just more bureaucracy. Uh, I, I, and, and the question is where. I mean, we know where it starts, but where does it end? And that is the problem. That is the major, major problem. And yet, uh, you know, we've got uh, a Labor government 
uh, that is not actually not doing all that well in the polls and anywhere else at the moment. That people out there are palpable with anger, white hot anger, about how they've governed this nation. And if they lose enough seats and end up with the Greens having to uh, uh, power share with them after the election, then God help Australia.